Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for another segment of 20 Random Questions. Tonight's guest is professional boxer Keon Papillon. So how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm doing good and yourself. I'm great. So um, now tell the fans a little bit who aren't familiar with you, uh, what gym are you out of and, and what city are you out of? I'm from Lafayette, Louisiana, uh, Papillon's Boxing Club, uh, six and oh, five knockouts. Oh, excuse me, four knockouts, one draw. Uh, okay, and, and just so the fans don't think that you own your own gym, your father actually owns the gym, and he yeah. he actually is Jason Papillon, and he was a professional boxer as well. Yeah, he uh, he owns the gym. I'm just his okay. father. <laughs> <laughs> Just for just for fans, uh, you know, historical fans that didn't know that he was your father, we just want to let the fans know that there is a connection there that he is your dad, <laughs> and he fought some big names as well, some some yes, household sir. names. Yes, sir. So, are you? Do you got anything coming up right now? Do you got any fights scheduled or any talks going on? Yeah, I was actually supposed to be fighting this weekend. Then it got pushed back to. December 9th, so and now it's just up in the air. But uh, you know it, it don't matter. I'm staying ready either way. So you know. Okay. All right. So you ready for these random twenty questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Question one: How did you get involved in the sport of boxing? Oh, at first my uh my dad tried to force me into you know I didn't want to, and I didn't want to do it. I was I guess sort of a crybaby at the time. Uh. Went play all kind of other different sports, and you know, long story short, I found my way back here. No, well, it was, true. Yeah, I, I, I saw somewhere in an interview or read it somewhere, I don't remember something to do with he gave you an odd birthday present one time. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, uh, for his birthday, I would come spar him over here. Well, I would come spar him. I was like, cool, I'm gonna spar my dad for his birthday. I was like, oh, so, so it was like, for his birthday present, yeah, I was like. Pretty cool idea, you know, I guess. And that's where it started. Then I uh, every kid should have a chance to punch their father in the face legally, right? <laughs> <laughs> some some of them. Not when not when your dad was ranked number three, man. That <laughs> could be rough sometimes. All right. Question two. So tell me what it means to have a former professional boxer as a father. You know, because a lot of guys right. don't, they don't know how to come up. And you you had that behind you to teach you the business, the boxing and all that. Right. Well, growing up, you know, everybody wanted to, you know, I went to a lot of, I guess you could say fighting schools. Uh, everybody wanted to pick me. Everybody wanted to fight me just to see if I could have fight. I got in a lot of fights that people don't know about. I hope my dad, when he hears this, he don't, you know, go try to figure all that out. But, uh. Yeah, but everybody would ask for interviews, autographs, you know, just to meet him. And it was it was pretty cool growing up, but I, I didn't want, you know, the last name. Like, the I didn't want to be a junior, I guess, Keon, the Jason Jr. And, uh, okay, now, but I mean, you know, oh, go ahead. Yeah, now it's perfect because, you know, he, uh, he gives me knowledge and I can see everything, you know, what he means in the ring. Like, it, I'm prepared. I feel like I'm prepared for anything. But I mean, besides just the boxing skills and things like that, to have somebody that great, you know, teaching you, he, it, you also get to learn the the business side of it, which a lot of boxers coming up on their own don't learn until something happens and then they learn the hard way. Right. Well, I know he won't put me in no in anything like that'll have me in harm's way or anything that I'm not ready for. So I know, like whatever he says, you know, is good for me. Okay. All right, question three. Do you have any boxing superstitions? Uh no, not that I had, not that I had so far. Okay. <laughs> not even in the amateurs? Amateurs, yeah, yeah. I was like, if I uh because a lot of a lot of friends wanted to come see me fight, and I was like, man, if they show up, I was like, man, it'll be this would be like the time I get, you know, knocked out or something. <laughs> So I, I never invited a lot of, you know, people in the amateurs to my fights, a lot of my friends at and, least. And speaking of the amateurs, just off the question for a lot of people that aren't familiar with you, you had a pretty good amateur career, did you not? Yeah, I, uh, I just had a lot of injuries. 
Yeah, that was pretty much it. But I had a I had a decent amateur career. I went uh won five nationals. Uh, I went around the world. You know, I mean the uh, nation. Okay. All right. Question four: What is something that your boxing fans don't know about you? Probably that I'm goofy. I I present a whole different persona when I'm in the ring or when I'm you know around or in public. But I'm one goofy character, man. I'm animated. <laughs> Very annoying. All right. Question five. What's the one thing that you hate the most in training? Got to be cutting weight. Got to be cutting weight. Yeah, because uh, I get pretty big sometimes, but cutting weight has got to be, I guess, the hardest thing. Other than that, man, I love training. So do you think that you'll actually move up a, a weight class sooner or no? Eventually, I will. Uh, as for right now, I can make the weight. So I'll, I'll be here for a while. Okay. Uh, question six. What are the top five things an amateur boxer needs to know when they decide to turn professional? Say that again. Yeah, cut off for a second. Okay. Uh, question six. What are the top five things an amateur boxer needs to know when they decide to turn professional, in your opinion? Uh, that is not a game no more. Uh headgear comes off you know you gotta set, you gotta get a good jab a good team around you experience plays a big part you know uh it's not child's play uh what else what else what else sitting down on your punches uh that is four things i said and getting a great jab also okay uh question seven what's who's the one boxer alive or dead that you'd want to sit down and have a conversation with if you could Mm. Andre Ward, big fan of Andre Ward. Question eight, if you could choose one big sponsor to sponsor you right now in your career, who would you choose? Jordan, no, Nike. Ah, oh, that's, ay, ay, ay. Nike or Jordan, I've always, I always dreamed about them sponsoring me. <laughs> okay. All right, question nine. What's something in your boxing arsenal that you think you do better than your father did? Oh, man. <laughs> well, I mean, if you ask him, well, I don't know, man. I really don't know. Uh, I feel like, for one, I'm bigger than him at the at the weight class because I feel like he was smaller than what he was fighting at. Uh Everyone says I'm stronger for some reason. I, I mean, that could be their opinion. I, I'm just going off what people say. I, I don't really know for me right now. I can't. I can't really compare it yet. Okay. <laughs> All right. Question ten. What are your boxing goals over the next five years? One to win a world championship. Like that's that's been the main goal so far. Uh, continually move up and wait. Keep winning world championships. I want to. I want to break it. I want to uh, break records. I want to uh, make history. Okay. Question eleven: If you could be on the cover of any magazine, what magazine would you want to be on the cover? Of? Sports Illustrated. All right. Question twelve: If you could meet any infamous person from history, who would you want to meet? Uh, I just had this answer in my head too. Uh. Kobe Bryant. Yeah, but he's I, not infamous. He, I mean. No, but, yeah, but I'm not talking famous. I'm talking infamous oh, like a criminal type from, criminal? from history. Oh, Charles Manson. Okay. <laughs> all right, question 13. If you could only eat all your meals for 30 days from one fast food restaurant, which one would it be? I don't really do fast food, uh, but if I had to choose either Subway or Chick-fil-A, uh, spicy okay. chicken sandwich. That's why I like to ask boxers that question, because I know a lot of them don't unless they're cheating and they're not yeah. training. So I like to hear where they like to go when they're not <laughs> training. Right. All right. Question 14. Can you tell me an interesting story so far out of your boxing career? Interesting story. Uh, well, amateurs. uh. Like I said earlier, I was always big for the weight class. Well, for my weight. Uh, 
It was at Nationals. I forgot which one. It was at a national tournament, though. I'm sorry. I, I had a phone call in the middle. Uh, but no, I was at a national tournament and won the first fight. Uh, as soon as I got out of the ring, went checking my weight, I was up 10 pounds already. So next day, I had to lose that. I was running all night, all day, or all night for sure. As soon as I got out of the ring, uh, got out of the ring, I went run, lose the weight, fought the next day, same thing, another ten pounds, and it was just a ongoing thing. And, uh lost in the finals, but yeah, you must have been drained though by the time you were done. Yeah, yeah, I was losing ten pounds for at least two and three nights straight. Yeah, it, it wore me out. That's that's pretty much what happened throughout my whole amateur career, but. Ooh. <laughs> so I know that you're uh you like basketball as well. So um mm -hmm. question 15, if you could play one-on-one -on -one basketball with any NBA player past or present, who would it be? Kobe. Kobe off top. Okay, question 16, if you could box in a celebrity boxing match versus <laughs> any actor or athlete, who would your opponent be? Uh, Chris Tucker, and probably be the funniest, most hilarious one. <laughs> <laughs> Question seventeen: If you could be any animal for one day, what animal would you want to be? Lion, lion off top. I want to run everything. I want to be the Lion right. King. <laughs> Question eighteen: If you could work with any trainer in boxing, who would you want to work with? Uh. I can't think of his name right now. Virgil Hunter? Other than that, I mean, I'm fine with my dad. Okay. We'll, just do well, no, I don't mean permanently. I mean, just to oh, to yeah. experience some time with a different trainer and learn some things. Yeah, yeah, I, um, Virgil. Okay, question 19. If they invented a new sport, tag team boxing, what current boxer right now would you choose as your tag team partner? Uh... Canelo. <laughs> I don't think we lose. Question, question 20. If you didn't become a boxer, what profession do you think you'd be in right now? I'd be a hooper, either that or football. Uh, probably basketball because I, I love to hoop. So you still think you'd be a professional athlete, though? Yeah, I, I, I think so. I, um, I'm too driven on, you know, like when my mind set on something is I'm gonna do it. Okay. Well listen, man, I appreciate you taking time to come on and do the 20 random questions. Um, I got one more question for you. It's really not on the top 20, but I'm just curious. Have you ever seen the movie that's named Papillon from 1973 with Steve McQueen? No, uh I was supposed to watch it, and that was a reminder right there. I was supposed to watch it for uh, cause somebody had asked me to, but um, I saw the uh, I saw it on Netflix actually, but I didn't watch it. So. Okay, I just thought that was curious. <laughs> I remembered that, and I was like, I wonder if he even knows that there's a movie with the same with his last <laughs> name. So, listen, if you got anything to promote or you want to say anything to sponsors or your fans, go ahead before we end. Uh, no fight as of yet uh, to promote, but uh. Y'all can follow me on Instagram at the chosen one underscore three three seven, and I'll keep y'all updated from there. All right, and with that, hold on. The truth has spoken. <laughs>